But that act of intimacy, consummation, was difficult for them. Welcome to another episode of My Life Experiences. I am Wezi Nyanewa Sosola. Happy New Year. I hope you did not deplete your bank account. I hope you kept that money, those financial resources intact. Because the month of January is known to be a lean month. And I hope you are starting it on a good note. And another reason why the month of January is famous, I was doing my research. I stumbled across a certain article which said the month of January is that month whereby the rate of divorces in families, separation in families, it starts climbing up. The divorce rate starts climbing up in the month of January until March when it reaches its peak, then it plummets. Then sometime later in the year, it starts to climb up again. Then it plummets again during the festivities. Then coming back to January, it climbs back up. Why is that? Why is that? I was just thinking aloud. But maybe the reason why a lot of people file for divorces, start fighting for divorces in the month of January, could be that maybe during the holidays, they spent a lot of time with their spouses, and they realize that I can't tolerate this person anymore. I cannot spend any much longer time with this person. I can't tolerate them to be around me anymore. Maybe they just came to their realization of how annoying that person they are living with is. So I'm talking about divorces among young couples. Maybe those less than 5 years, 10 years below, 15 years below. Because the statistics were saying that. 43%, 40 to 43% of divorces happen among these people. Less than 15 years, less than 10 years of marriage, less than 5 years of marriage. They, it ends in divorce. And of course, I'm talking from a Christian perspective. Because the word of God clearly says that I hate divorce. God hates divorce. That's why I'm saying again to qualify, to emphasize that I'm talking for a more Christian perspective. That's why the traditional values are very strong values, which says that in sickness and health, for better, for worse, till death do us part. Of course, I must say also that there are some other inevitable circumstances that may cause people to, to separate, to divorce. But in general, God hates divorce. That's according to the Bible. You need to be sure of the person you're getting married to. Be sure. Don't just get married because of desperation. I'm desperate. I need to get married. I need to get laid. I want to uh, experience intimacy with somebody. Then you stay in marriage for um, six months to nine months. Then coming to December, you realize I cannot tolerate this person anymore. I can't hang around them anymore. Then coming to January, you decide to drop the bomb. You separate from a spouse. And some other times... Could be that people, they know that I want to separate from this person, but I want the festivities to pass first. I don't want to cause any disruption during this festive time. And in January, after the festivities, they file for divorce. Others may just think that, okay, I think in the month of January, is the first month of the year. I just want a fresh start. I want to start a fresh start. I want to see the world from a different perspective. I want to do a different thing. And that's when they decide to drop off to their spouse in the month of January. Whatever the cause for January being the start of the peak period for divorces is, I don't know why. I don't know why. But there could be so many causes for that. But now, I just want to talk about the general causes for divorce. What is it? Why do people divorce? One of the reasons that people divorce is the financial, um, financial disagreements, financial mistrust. Finances are one of the biggest cause for divorces among couples. And talking about the issue of finances, I've already talked about it in a number of episodes. I talk it in a certain episode number one, episode number two, episode number three. I've talked several episodes about managing money, managing money. If you can go back and also check the links that are appearing above, you come to uh, across these links and just click on them. Look at what I had said, especially for young couples. How do you manage money in your marriage? 
How do you better manage your budget? How do you may better manage your financial plans? But today I just want to focus on another factor, a common cause for marriages. This is the issue of intimacy. Intimacy in young couples. Intimacy in marriages. This is another cause for high rates of divorces. So, some few months back, I was listening to a certain YouTube influencer. Two of them, they are young girls, new word, under three years of marriage. They were talking about the challenges they have been facing in their marriage. Another one about three years, another one about under a year. Talking about the challenges that are facing in marriage, especially in the area of intimacy. So they made this YouTube video. And one of the, the girls was complaining that she had waited until marriage to consummate their marriage. She waited, which is the Christian way of waiting. And when she came into marriage, when the time came to consummate and to be intimate with the husband, it was hard. It was failing. It was failing, basically. It was very hard. It was so painful. She couldn't bear it. She couldn't bear it at all. I felt sorry for this girl. I felt bad for this girl. I think we are lacking so much. We are lacking a lot in our counseling sessions with young couples. How do we go about marriage? How do we go about intimacy, issues of intimacy? I think that we are lacking somewhere. Because when this girl is a Christian girl is discussing that topic with a friend on how she has stayed months, up to six months, struggling, and she had to buy dilators, dilators to help. I mean, dilators are these um, objects that you, people use to dilate. Yeah. So she was using those to help. She bought lubricants. But that act of intimacy, consummation, was difficult for them. Up to six months, up to now, she was still struggling with that issue. And I felt really sorry about that girl. That's when it came to my mind that maybe it's high time I should address this. I would not address it in a greater detail, no. I would just say one or two things about the issue of intimacy in young couples, intimacy in marriage. How should people go about it? Because we are preaching as Christians, you have to wait. Otherwise, the devil is going to take advantage of the situation and will start whispering to these young people that, no, it's okay. You have to test each other out so that you should know if you are compatible, so that you should know if you will be able to do it, you should get used, and so on and so forth. If we, if we as a Christians, if we as people who are preaching abstinence, we don't come in and tell these young people, how do you go about the issue of intimacy when you get married? The devil will find their way in to talk to them, to teach them other ways of doing it. We don't want that to happen. That's why I'm here. The first thing that you should do, if you want to enjoy your intimate life, if you want to enjoy your intimacy, if you do not want to have a hard time with this consummation of my, because it's not supposed to be hard at all. God made this when a woman reaches puberty and thereabouts, God keeps on um, getting, making the body ready for this act. God makes the body ready for this act. So if you tell me that you are staying six months and you cannot do it, because you feel as if you need to use a dilator or you, it's painful for you. It's not, you can't enjoy it. You can't enjoy it, but it's meant to be enjoyed. So what do you do as a young couple? The first thing that I want to point out is that marry somebody you are attracted to. Point number one. Marry a man or a woman that you are attracted to. Because if you marry a woman or a man you are attracted to, you've been waiting for this whole while, the long period that you've been waiting for. It could be a year. It could be two years, three years. But I know that most couples that wait until marriage, Maybe they get married quicker, maybe within a year. Some go to up to two years. Others three, but mm, it's, it's not good. Sometimes it's not easy to, to wait until that long. But if you do that and you get into marriage, get married with somebody you're attracted to. Don't just marry every Jim and Jack out of desperation. Somebody with the, um, some negative to you. 
you are not attracted to, don't just get married out of desperation just because you want to get laid or just because you want to get married to somebody, you want to be intimate or you don't want people to say bad stuff about you anymore and you just get into marriage for that sake. Don't do that. That's the biggest mistake that you can make. It's better for you to stay single, stay single than getting married to somebody you're not attracted to. Because if you get married to somebody you're attracted to, the whole while you need that person, you desire that person. And that moment when you get married to them, you can't wait. Your body has already, your blood is running fast within and your body is already getting ready and everything, secretion happens. And when the consummation happens, it's easy. It's so easy because the body is already prepared for this act. It prepares them. So, but there's somebody you are attracted to. But if somebody with me, not if, if somebody who has got this other problem, other, if you are attracted to somebody with not if, that's fine. That's fine with you. But if somebody you already have got this ah, resentment towards, but you're just marrying because I want to get married. When you get married, you not desire that person. So the body will not prepare. So when you are trying to get intimate, it will be hard because the body has not prepared. This body biologically has to prepare and it secrete its secretions to enable the act of consummation to happen without problem. So point number one, marry somebody you are attracted to. Marry somebody you are attracted point to. Point number two, watch your diet. Watch your diet. You can go to Google. There are some other foods which are so helpful with um uh, they they bring all this they enhance your production of some hormones they enhance um the flow of blood to all the areas in your body so you just google it what are the foods that can enhance my hormones that can enhance the flow of blood so that when you get into that intimate time intimate moment you should be able to get intimate easily so just google that out I don't want to go into detail. I've got an idea of which foods are good, which not. You know, I've been married for now close to 20 years, and I have got a good idea about these things. But for some of this information, for me to speak it out, to get it out, I need to do a consultancy. <laughs> I can't just do it now, but I need to get paid for it. I need to be a consultancy, a consultant for it. Then I can talk more about what do you do, what food do you eat, what. But now just Google and find out which foods are best for a newly wed couple. On your first night, you want things to, to go smoothly. You don't want to be in much pain. You don't want to bring this resentment that oh, this person is just causing me a lot of pain. You don't want to do that. So watch your diet. Watch your diet, whatever it is that you can eat. That's point number two. Point number three, visit your doctor's office. Because sometimes they are what we call STIs. Don't feel shy. Both of you, yourself and your husband as a couple, go to the doctors, seek medical attention. The doctor should advise you if you've got an STI, it needs to be cleared. You need to get treatment, both you and your husband. If you do it alone, you will find that the next time you are together, you will infect each other. And it will keep on recycling. It will still be, a, it will keep on being a cycle on and on and on. But you need to go together to the doctor's office. You both get a treatment and this thrush, this yeast infection until it's cleared like that. And then you get back to, to the grind. You enjoy um, your intimate life. So just don't shy away from the doctor's office. Sometimes we say, if you are a lady, you are shying with men doctors, you can go to female doctors. These days, there are a lot of female doctors. Go to them if you are so shy to go to a male doctor. But don't shy away from doctors. They are there to help us go. They are prof there are so many professional medical professionals. They are going to help you to clear whatever infection it is that you have. If you are feeling itchy, all that itchiness, they cause a rash down there. And that rash, when it's bruised, it causes a lot of pain and which could be another reason why you are having problems with your intimate getting consummated in your marriage. Point number four, how do you enjoy a fulfilling intimate life? If you are on a lifelong medication or a long-term medication and you realize that once when you are taking that medication, it's affecting your intimate life, 
it's best to go back to the doctor's office, ask them, is there what are the side effects of this medication? These are the things that I'm facing. Sometimes the medications may interfere with our body processes, the way our hormones work, so it may bring about some side effects. I'm not talking about all medications, but there are some medications which may do that. Go to your doctor, ask for the side effects. If indeed some of, of the side effects is that it affects your, your body functions that you can't perform well intimately, then ask for an alternative medication. Especially if it's a very long-term medication or if it's a lifelong medication. But for a one-week, a two-week medication, I think you can take that. Then after that, you go back to the grind. Everything continues as normal. But if this one is a long-term medication, bear in mind, go to the doctor, ask for alternative medication. How do you remedy? How do you intervene in that situation? Point number five, I want to talk about contraceptions. But mind you, I don't want to be taken out of context because I'm not bringing in a position. I don't have any position of whether people should take contraceptions or whether they should not. I don't have that position. I don't, especially the moral aspect of it, whether it's okay, whether it's moral or whether it's immoral. I do not have that position in my life. I'm not well knowledgeable about that. Maybe somebody else can handle it. But right now I'm talking about the issue of contraception in relation to couples who are struggling to be intimate, couples who are struggling to consummate. If you are among those couples, that's why now I'm talking about the issue of contraception. Because contraceptions, most of them, they are mostly hormones, which when you introduce to your body, they may interfere with your body hormones. And sometimes that interference may lead to that hormone in your body that produces the secretion, that secretion that readies your body for intimacy, they may interfere with that hormone. So because of that, you find that you are so dry. You are so dry. You're not very wet. You're not getting, um, your body is not preparing much because you are taking these hormones. So if you are a young couple, you've just gotten married, you have to get to know your body first. How does it function? Don't just go right away to taking these contraceptions because you do not know how your body functions. And you may get into marriage, you are taking this contraception already because you don't you want to avoid pregnancy, especially for young couples these days. They don't want maybe to have kids in the first year or second year. They don't want to do that. That's up to you. You may discuss with your partner, but you may go there with it, taking contraceptions already. And when your intimate life is struggling you may think that there are other reasons not knowing that it's the hormones that you are taking it's the contraception that you are taking that is making it hard for you to consummate because sometimes these hormones they interfere with your body processes and they may cause dryness the body is supposed to secrete these secretions which makes consummation easier and when you are introducing these other uh, contraceptions, some of them may have a side effect that it may cause dryness to that area. And when that dryness happens, that's when consummation may be problematic for you. But if you just start marriage right away with taking the contraceptions, you don't know that this is the reason. You may just be thinking that Ish, maybe I'm too tight, maybe I need the... the um, the, the dilators, or maybe I need creams, not knowing that your body can function normally, but you have not given it a chance to function normally. So when you get into marriage, give your body a chance to function normally. Leave these contraceptions aside, just go there. If anything, if at all, you would like to avoid the pregnancy. Yeah, so as I've said, you can use non-medical interventions, but don't just rush and use these medical interventions for a newly couple. It may interfere with your hormones. It may interfere with the operations of your body. You may think that uh, this uh, um, intimate 
aspect of marriage or this consummation is, is hard or it's painful, then you develop this resentment towards it, resentment towards your partner that you are causing me a lot of pain. I don't want to be with you and so on. Just because maybe you don't know how your body is supposed to function. So once you get married, allow your body to function. This is what God made and it's good. God made this act. It's good when you allow your body to function normally. It is going to secrete all those necessary secretions and the act of consummation will be easy and fulfilling and simple. It's not even supposed to be that painful and you are saying that, oh, I'm developing resentment or you are having trauma, traumatic situations and later on it will cause problems in your marriage because you're not being intimate anymore. Go there to learn each other, go there to learn your body, leave this aside. So, as I said, I was so touched with these two girls, two young women. They were complaining about their um, intimate life, about their consummation, how they are having problems, how they have to buy a dilators, where they have to buy so many creams to help, but it's not helping. So I was just touched as a Christian and I decided to take my step on how to help address this issue. So, just to recap, I've talked about number one, get married to somebody you're attracted to, get married to somebody you desire, somebody you like, somebody you want, get married to that kind of a person. Number two, watch your diet, watch your food, just Google it. Some other foods are best to help your body prepare for intimate actions. Number three, get yourself checked for STIs, the yeast infections, the fungal infections, the other bacterial infections, get that checked out. The two of you, both of you, get treated for that. Number four, I've talked about the issue of medication. There could be long-term medication or longer period medications, lifelong medications. Ask if you've realized that maybe it's that one. Ask your doctor for side effects. And if it's indeed that medication, then just ask for an alternative medication from your doctor's office. Number five, I've talked about the issue of contraception. Sometimes it does interfere with our performance of our bodies, with our body processes, because you're introducing hormones that it may cause dryness. So just try when you are getting into marriage, avoid these contraceptions. If at all you want to use contraceptions, use those that are not hormonal based or that are not medically based. Maybe use some of these contraceptions if you want to. But I don't want to talk about the moral aspect of it, but use whatever if you want to. Get rid of this idea or this phobia against pregnancy. That's another area that I want to say. Get rid of a phobia against pregnancy. Other young couples say, I don't want to get pregnant at whatever cost. At whatever cost, I don't want to get pregnant. That's what others they say. But get rid of that phobia. Just receive it if it happens. Sometimes, you know, you may try different interventions, but still pregnancy happens. You need to be expectant for this thing. That you are married now, it can happen at whatever time. It can happen. You can get pregnant. So if you do get pregnant while you are taking precautions, just welcome it. Welcome the baby. You grow to love that baby. It's the gift that God has given you. Accept them in your life. Accept him or her in your life. It's your child. After all, she's born or he's born in a good environment with a dad, with a mom. So if pregnancy happens, just accept it. But now these points are just meant to help you have a fulfilling, intimate life with your husband, with your wife as a couple so that it should not cause any problems it should not cause any divorces it should not cause any separations because even the bible says your body is not your own is for your partner your, your husband or the husband's body is not his own is for the wife so you people should they're supposed to work together you're supposed to help each other you are supposed to be intimate it's part of marriage the devil is a liar the devil is a liar and according to john 10 verse 10 I want to read, it says, The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I come that they may have life, and they may have it more abundantly. The Lord wants you to have a fulfilling life, a fulfilled life. You should not stay in marriage 
and you are having these traumatic experiences. You should not stay in marriage and you are having all these problems. Marriage is supposed to be fulfilling to you in all aspects. Mentally, socially, intimate life, whatever consummation is supposed to be fulfilling to you. So this is what God is saying, that I've come to give them life and life in abundance. But the devil is a liar. He wants to bring counterfeits. He wants to tell you that hey, I, I, I wish I had tried this out before I got married. And you start telling young, young girls, you can be trying it out so that you should know whether you are compatible or not. It's a lie. It's a lie. A lie from the pit of darkness. Marriage consummation is not meant to be hard. It's not meant to be hard. Just look out for uh, of some of these things that I've talked about. Concert other elderly women, they have to tell you their experiences as well. And you are going to enjoy the act of consummation because it's created by God. Other people, I'm hearing them, they're saying, oh, purity kaja is so toxic. Purity kaja is so toxic and so on. No, it's not toxic at all. We're talking about the act of consummation. It's a good thing, but done at the right time, done in marriage. That's what the Lord tells us to do as a Christian. It's a very good thing. It's a very pure thing. There is nothing evil about it, nothing at all. But in it trying to preserve you, wait until the time of marriage. And uh, when you get there, you need to have a fulfilling experience, a fulfilling life. And what can you do? Observe some of these things that I've talked about. So, there you have it. My take, how to have a fulfilling, intimate life in your marriage. I hope this has been helpful to you. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. And comment in the comment section below. Tell me if you've got other experiences. Or maybe if you are having trouble in consummating your marriage, if you are feeling so painful, you can even send me an email. Just tell me what do you think about this, what do you think about that. But please comment in the comment section below. Thank you so much, friends. Stay blessed.